Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're doing really well, today there was no Juventus first team, but it was Juventus women that won, and we are really happy because they go to the semi-final of Coppa Italia, and also there was the Juve under 19 that were playing in uh, UEFA Youth League, so the Champions League of the Kids, and unfortunately, we, we lost. We were eliminated. We go not to the uh, round uh, or to the quarterfinal because you have a, or the round of 16, round of 16 quarterfinal, and then you have uh, the final four. So we, we it's over. It's over for Juventus. That's a real pity. It is what it is. I was thinking to make a kind of video, kind of vlog uh, to speak about the experience I had because uh, some of you, you know that uh, I had the chance to go there as uh, a Juve staff member, not as a supporter. That was my first initial idea. But unfortunately, I don't know. Maybe I will do a video, but it will absolutely not be a vlog. Why? Because I don't have enough material. I didn't film enough. I didn't you know, record myself. Why? Because it's a total different story when you are going as a content creator or as a supporter, as a fan, and when you are going as a, as a staff, as a staff member, where you have other things to do, you have to pay attention, you have to be concentrated, so probably not, but that doesn't mean that uh, I didn't live a dream, an experience that was fantastic, that's what I want to share today with you, speaking not only about the game, because yes, I want to speak about what we saw on the field, I want to speak about Kenan Nildis, because I know that a lot of people are asking Beppe, how is Kenan Nildis? I can speak about uh, how Kenan Nildis is on, but also off the field, because I spoke with Kenan Nildis, but I want to speak also about other players that I really was impressed to see, but also about the experience. What is it to be a staff member of Juventus for at least one day, a real staff member, not behind the screen, but in real life? What do you do? When are you going to the stadium? At what time are you going? What are you doing after? the game uh with who are you speaking i uh i was uh sitting next to or just behind Mbangula. it was just a fantastic experience this is what i want to share with you let me say hello but at first i want to start with something totally different before that really fast really fast i made a short about it but i really want to speak about something after saying hello of course ciao to vito Pileggi, that it was the first one in the chat today. Ciao, grande Vito. Ciao, Zlatko. Starzi. Ciao, Beppe. What was the referee? He was a disaster. He was a total disaster. He was a total disaster. Things that are uh, scaring me a bit, to be honest, and um, that I believe that ruined the experience. I was talking also to some uh, management of Yang that were sitting next to me. I have the chance to speak uh, Flemish as well. So I had the chance to interact really easy about what was happening at that moment uh, on the first, the second uh, red cards about uh, the direction that the, the referee decided to take. And they, they were as surprised as me. I was a Juve fan. They are uh, Yank fans, and we were all super, super, really super surprised of what was happening on the field. Then, Yank won. They were happy, of course, that they won. It was not that they were screaming, uh, referee, out. Let's not exaggerate. But they were really surprised. And I have to admit, and uh, I saw Jim in the chat, that uh, the people next to me, that uh, is the one that invested actually a lot of money years ago into the Yank youth development, because this is what Yank is doing putting money in youth development, they are working really well, and these players are going to the B team, because they have a B team, then they go to the first team, and then you have these jewels that are sold to other teams, like for example in <coughs> the Netherlands, where Eredivisie is a bit higher in terms of level. They are working really well. Well, I have to admit, super fair play was really beautiful to see. The ultras were fighting with each other, the ones of Yang versus the one of Juventus. It was a total disaster. Speaking about Jim, let me, before saying hello to all the other ones and speaking about enough topic that I want to start with. Guys, what made me the most, really, yeah? I tell you without any, I don't know, uh, I tell you the truth. Like I am, I tell you the truth. What made the, me the most, but really sincerely, eh, happy was not speaking with Kenan Yildiz or sitting next to uh, M Bangula or uh, to, to see here Montero. It was not that. Of course, I'm happy about that, of course. But it was the fact that I was able to, uh, to be there and that some people were came in, coming to me and they were saying, Beppe, Beppe, ciao. Um, I am Steph, because we see Steph in the chat. 
uh, Jim, of course, I knew already Jim uh, because he has also his profile picture, so it's easier. But I, I and thank you, Jim, because he offered me not one but two coffees. I didn't even pay, uh, but I saw Jim, I saw Steph, I saw uh, people that knew me also from uh, not immediately from here because because they are French speaking. But I saw other people that were talking with me in French. You know, it it it, it started to be real. I met people in a. A few times that I went to the Juventus Stadium that knew me from Juventus Twitch or from the YouTube channel where we had the chance to interact. But having that beautiful reality, like Jim, every day we are talking with Jim in the chat. But then meeting Jim or Steph Games that is there and taking a picture together, a selfie, speaking, interacting a bit uh, where they are in Dutch, in Dutch, that is not in English. It, it it made it made you know what what I'm doing every day now since three years make it real, and this was for me the most the most touching part at least uh, interacting with people from this community. So thank you really to Jim to Steph but also to the other people that are probably not here because uh, they know me from Juventus Twitch or from Twitter or whatever it was really a honor. Really, I am blessed to uh, to to interact with you. Thank you, really really appreciate it. So. Ciao to Stylerzy, ciao to Dan Avola that is uh, speaking and asking about the emotions to work and to be with the staff of Juventus. I will tell you. Ciao Marian, ciao Sasha, to, uh, to Thomas, ciao to Hanin Namir, grande Hanin that is there as well. Tony is there. Uh, uh, here, here, Steph, Steph, grande Steph. Uh, Ziad, uh, it's live out of nowhere. No, I promised that I would go live. I promised that I would go live. I was thinking to go live just to interact a bit, but at the end, uh, you know, I watched first Paris Saint-Germain, no, Marseille versus Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, any positive from the under-19 years? Yeah, I saw some positives. I tell you the truth, I saw some positive today, even if we lost. And uh, I'm happy that Steph and Jim are there because they will confirm yes or not. Uh, I'm happy for you, Beppe, that the experience is this. Yeah, it was nice. So, first of all, before under-19, let me just speak a few words about one thing that is important for me, is that I watched the, how do you call it? Le Classic, Le Classic. It's not the Classico Barcelona versus Real Madrid. It's Le Classic Marseille versus Paris Saint-Germain in Coupe de France. My son said at a certain moment, uh, I want to watch it. I, I didn't care, you know that I don't care. He said, I really want to watch it. Uh, just put it on television. I put it on television, first minute until the end. Guys, guys, I'm scared. I'm. It was not Ligue 1, it was Coupe de France, one game in or out, and that's already a bit different because you know that in Ligue 1 you have also like in Serie A 38 games, so it's a bit different if you have one game, in or out. But anyway, we played a lot of Coppa Italia games versus Lazio, for example, it was also in or out without home and away. Mamma mia, guys, mamma mia, the intensity that I saw in that game from the first minute, the high pressing from the team of Tudor from l'Olympique de Marseille, was impressive, but also the intensity of Paris Saint-Germain that at the end they lost, it was impressive, impressive, impressive. Guys, it was long time, I promised you, I don't know if you watched it or not, I promised you it was long time that I didn't watch a game with that intensity. I saw Chelsea versus uh, Fulham, they did 0-0, it was a beautiful football, it was already another level of Serie A, I tell you the truth, even if the second half was a bit more boring. I saw uh, uh, Arsenal, if I'm not wrong, I saw Manchester City versus Tottenham, so I watched a lot of Premier League in the last weeks, I saw Serie A until they decided to, uh, to annoy us, I know Serie A, of course I know. But I was really, really impressed about uh, the quality on the on on the field. Uh, Tudor, fantastic coach, fantastic coach, uh, that was able to do it his way. Really authentic coach that is true to himself. And uh, people will say now, of course, uh, we had him at Juventus. We didn't manage him well. What will happen if, uh, or what would have happened if we kept? him and Pirlo. First of all, you have to understand that him and Pirlo, they didn't get along it to each other. Because when we appointed Pirlo as a head coach, we decided to uh, to go with uh, Tudor. The problem is that Pirlo, and this is probably the biggest mistake that Pirlo did, is that he brought in his best friend, Baronio, uh, that he knows since uh, Brescia, since that they were kids. And he decided to invest more in 
Baronio as an assistant coach than in Tudor. Tudor said it himself. Eh? Uh, Pirro spoke with everyone and he put everyone on the same level, going with a lot more affinities with Baronio that you can see in uh, All or Nothing Juve. Eh? You can see it in All or Nothing where Pirlo is uh, having dinner and so on and so on with Baronio. Um, so no, it, it is not that uh, Pirlo and uh, Tudor would have done a really great job if they had three or four years. They didn't go along with each other. Two total different personalities. So it is totally impossible. Then if you tell me, Beppe, uh, what if we kept Tudor? Well, the problem is that uh, Tudor was super elegant uh, because from the moment that he understood and probably he had some fight with Pirlo that he was out of the race to really be someone that could say something, he decided to stand back a bit, finish the season with Juventus and then stand step back and it's a real pity but Tudor also said I am probably and probably at the moment because in the future you never know not a coach that can manage teams like Juventus for example why because I told you he's a real authentic coach that needs to have his say in the team we saw it also when he was managing Udinese and so on and so on um, so it's a coach that at Marseille when he arrived I tell you the truth I tell you the truth, like Antonio Conte, eh, you know, the truth is the truth. Well, he took some players with their fists and he put them on the walls because he was not happy with the situation. You know, in that sense, you can go towards an Antonio Conte-esque behavior with a lot of energy, with a lot of mentality uh, from, from the ex-Juve that he grew up in, the, the, Con the Juve of Lippi, of Conte, for example, of Montero, that I watch today. So that grinta, that spirit, that at Juventus as a player is absolutely accepted, as a coach is accepted as well, because uh, Antonio Conte did it, but you have some compromises to do when you are playing with big, big, big international stars like a Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, not him, eh? not only him, but a Cristiano Ronaldo, where you have sometimes to uh, to step, to take a step back uh, in your decision. That's why he was really frustrated and he said, no, it's or my way or no way. And uh, we see that at uh, Marseille, that is a fantastic club. Fantastic club, you can see a big club, a historic club, but still it's not a club like Juventus in terms of... Uh, of prestige, well, uh, it's a bit more familiar, it's a bit more uh, chaleur, hot and so on. It's perfectly working. It's perfectly working also with uh, the president that is an ex-Juve employee that is now the president of Marseille. Well, uh, uh, would I take him back? Yes, under certain conditions and probably and probably with a more mature Tudor, with a mature Tudor that is also able to manage big egos, big stars, that uh, probably in terms of VIP personality are more important, you know, these big international stars, I'm thinking about, it, uh, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is a perfect example, but not only him, huh? uh, it can be a Paul Pogba, it can be, you know, these big, big, big elite stars. Now, of course, in the future, if Juventus is uh, stepping away a bit from these big, big names, which is the plan, well, a Tudor would fit in perfectly, Absolutely. Will he come back tomorrow? I don't believe so. He's just at his first year at Marseille and he's doing extraordinary things. So that's what I wanted to say about Marseille, Paris Saint-Germain, and maybe adding that I'm scared, guys, because Ligue 1 is surpassing Serie A. Ligue 1 is surpassing Serie A. I start watching some games of Ligue 1, a league that we all called Farmer League, a league that we ne none of us was appreciating. Well, if they continue to play with that heart, with that passion, with uh, Lens, for example, Lens, Lille, uh, Marseille, you have a few teams there that are growing up really fast and doing really beautiful work. And I heard some rumors that you have these sheikhs, uh, you know, or the, the Arabic world, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, owners that are also thinking to start investing in other teams than Paris Saint-Germain, thinking about uh, taking over Marseille or these big institutions in the future. So I don't know, I don't believe that they will ever reach Premier League, but that can be, you know, the, the antagonist of the Premier League, surpassing La Liga, surpassing Bundesliga, surpassing Serie A. So pay attention to uh, to 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 Liga.
that is a league that I never really particularly appreciate, but pay attention to that. Now that we said that, I don't want to speak too much about it. Let me say thank you to Mlaggio. Mlaggio that uh, became a member, but not for the first time. He's already 13 months with us on the channel. Greetings, Beve, my friend, at this ungodly hour. Eh, hey, ungodly hour. Guys, I came back um, and I will tell you now my experience, but I was home, I believe it was 8.30 p.m. my time. I, I ate something, I discussed a bit with the family, at 9 p.m. it started uh, Paris Saint-Germain and then the time, you know, to 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 set up a thumbnail, uh, you know, that, that that's why I'm here and at least leaving, you know, like 30 minutes uh, uh, so that the people are receiving the notification that I will go live. It's not that I'm so important that people are just dropping everything and are here. But uh, yeah, it depends where you are in the world, I can uh, totally understand it. Thank you, Mladjo, my friend. So what are the questions? What, what do we start with? Speaking about under 19 now, the experience. What do you want to know? What do we start with? The experience himself uh, being with the staff members of Juve. Do you want my experience, uh, um, you know, how I live the game? Or do you want first to speak about the game in himself? What do we start with? Um, gaming himself, the players, what are your questions? It's more, you know, like your questions and from there we will go and I will try to explain. <laughs> uh, the big question, how did yield this look uh, that's the big that's the big question how did yield this look well i tell you the truth uh yield this is from another category yield this is from another category but really another category i tell you also that uh the field was not the most easy one for a player like yield this uh that was limiting a bit is a uh, technical abilities I didn't really like like uh, we were not able to find our wingers because you know that we were playing a 4-4-2 in the beginning of the game at least when we were with 11 players huh? he starts immediately immediately the first minute of the game you see Ealing Yildiz Kenan Yildiz I was about to say Ealing Jr. Can I kneel this? Taking the ball on that left side, boom, he shot on target. First minute of the game, immediately. I am here, I'm can I kneel this? I'm saying, mamma mia, here we will kill Genk. That is not the most best team of the world. I told you already, they had some great players. They went to the B teams and the even better ones, they went with the first team. So um, it was not the best Genk, to be honest. But we start immediately, boom, boom, can I kneel this? And then I have to admit that we have some difficulties to find and Kenan Yildiz and Luis Haza on the other side of the field. Luis Haza, that a lot of time he was available and totally free. But we were playing a lot of time trying to find Kenan Yildiz that had some difficulties. I tell you, after these first five minutes of Kenan Yildiz, uh, he disappeared a bit and I was not really impressed by what he was offering not because he didn't have a lot of balls. And, and that was a bit the, the pity, but I told you immediately that I was super impressed by him, of course, that is another level. Montero is changing the wingers, putting Kenan Yildiz on the other side, so that we are also trying to play for him. But we really clearly saw a team that was trying to find him eh? without the possibility to do it, because, of course, Yank was trying to man-mark him, and they understood that Juventus was always going on that side. We tried to change, but Juventus in that first half, 11 versus 11, was not the best Juventus I saw. I saw some beautiful things. I saw also the goalkeeper doing a beautiful save at a certain moment on a free kick of Yank. Yildiz... He really step up from the moment that we are with 10 on the field. It's it's really strange. But that's the moment where he really step up and that's the moment where he was a bit closer to me because he was playing on my side where I was. Probably he was watching me and he said, Mamma mia, I have to impress Beppe. And uh, no, jokes aside, that's where he started to impress me. Technical abilities, also body mass. Huh? He's huge, he's big, he's tall, uh, he has muscles. You see that uh, he's able to, to go in short spaces in dribbles. Physical potence, you know, the, the, the strength, the physical strength, you see it. He's taking that ball and bam, and he's going bam, and, and, and he's trying something. Not always he's succeeding in his things, but dribbles in short spaces, change of directions. When you are watch, I watch him a lot of time with the young with the young kids. But watching him like this, really, because it's not in the big stadium, it was in the in the in the small stadium. 
watching him from so close is really impressive. It's really impressive. Uh, guys, ask to, uh, to, our, to our friends in the chat that were there as well, uh, to Jim uh, and to Sam. Ask them, uh, ask, uh, Steph, Sam, to Jim and to, and to, uh, to Steph. Ask them uh, as well, because I'm happy that uh, they can uh, tell, tell us what they are thinking about it. Uh, Anthony, no, I no, no, not not now because of course, uh, at the end, you know, you see that he's from another category. You see that he's from another level. You see that he's a player that can do the difference. But 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 there is a journey, a journey that is not only that is not only physical. That is not only technical it is not only speed pace it is also mentally it is also mentally and it's also experience okay uh no calma then i'm not excluding that he can't be called up at one time with juventus first team but we have already a lot of talents that need some minutes like a Sule, like a Ealing Jr. Because Miretti, that we will speak about of course a bit later, and Fagioli are receiving midfield uh, minutes in a midfield that is in need of it. Up front we see that the other players are uh, are, are benching. So it makes totally no sense. But Juventus is uh, trying to, to give him a clear journey, a clear path in him already being called up for some games with the next gens, which is already a uh, professional football because the under 19 is primavera is youth academy Serie C third division in Italy is already professional football so he's already called up and he will be called up more and more and more but he's also training a lot of time with the first team tranquilly let him grow let give him the time don't burn him too fast because if I see how we are reacting towards <coughs> A Marleake that suddenly was not good anymore. Towards a Miretti that suddenly is not good anymore. If I see how we are reacting, uh, guys, maybe, or we can speak about the Kulusevski, we can speak about a lot of young players. Huh? Vlaovic, even Vlaovic was put in doubt. Guys, even Vlaovic. Vlau Do you have in mind Vlaovic? You put in doubt Vlaovic. Dusan Vlaovic. So, no, I would not put him personally in first team. I don't also need see the need. You have a player that is coming back that is called Federico Chiesa. You have an Ealing Junior. You have a Kostic. On the other side, you have Sule. You have Di Maria. You have even Quadrado that can play there. You have a Moiskin. You have Milik when he will come back. You have Vlaovic. We are with too much. It makes no sense to call up just to call up to make him a pleasure. And actually, that pleasure, that happiness will transform in sadness when he will see that he will not play. Towards the end of the season, if we are able to already have hit our objectives, why not? Giving and giving them an award, but it makes no sense. That's my opinion, guys. Huh? Like Anthony saying, let him build. Let him build. Uh, what else do we speak about? Do you want to speak about the game? Uh, because people are saying the referee was a disaster, which I agree. Please, Beppe, let me go and watch the highlights and come back. Go. Ciao, Peniel. Hey, come back. We are waiting for you. Haza didn't impress Hanin. I don't agree, even if it was not his best game. Uh, but I believe it was more, and I was speaking with it about uh, with a team analyst of Juventus. I will explain you what a team analyst is. You will, data analyst, uh, when we will go towards my experience. But uh, that's really an important role, by the way. Uh, I was really impressed. I already knew, I saw, but seeing it really next to me doing things was really impressive uh, with an application on the app. Anyway, I was speaking with him. I was speaking with a... Um, with the team manager and so on, in the first half, we were absolutely not looking for Luis Haza. But from the moment that we were able to find him, he was doing quite well. For me, it's probably, and you will uh, you will be shocked when I will tell you that, but probably for me, it's the most technical player we have in the team, Luis Haza. I see a beautiful future for Luis Haza is if, he, if he's able to take a bit of muscles, which Kenan Nildis already has, because Kenan Nildis is already taller, muscular, big. You see that, okay, if I push him, he will not fall on the ground. 
Hazard, you can discuss, you know. So Hazard needs to uh, to grow a bit on, on, on that side, but really technical player, really technical. Uh, but also him and Kalma. You know, I will tell you my favorite player of the game until the fact that he was out and Jim can maybe confirm me or not. I knew it already because I watched him on television. But guys, Joseph Nongue Buende. More than more than Yildiz, he impressed me. Yildiz, because I told you, huh, he woke he woke up at the in the last thirty minutes. Joseph Nongue, mamma mia, he played next to Andrea Bonetti. Andrea Bonetti is a next gen player because we had three next gen players that came down to support the team. Huysen was suspended, couldn't play, so you had a uh, uh, Zuango, Bonetti. And uh, Savona, uh, Savona, three players, three players that came back, came, uh, came down. I didn't see the difference of experience, of uh, way of playing. Joseph Nongue is a player, guys, is a player that we will hear speaking about. I don't know, because again, it is in the midfield where we have it, that talent again. Uh... I would love to have sometime, you know, also defenders like that. But Joseph Nongue, eh, Jimmy saying a beast. Joseph Nongue, he impressed me. Recuperation. Short spaces dribbles for a midfielder that is higher. Eh? He's tall. Eh? Long legs, but able to go in short, uh, short spaces dribbles. The first time I watch him real life, uh, he's taking everything with a header, controlling with the chest. Passes, really, you know, solid passes, putting, you know, like the confidence in that pass, opening the game, watching, always available, defensively, offensively. He was everywhere. Hanin is saying complete midfielder. If I have to say one man that impressed me even more, and it's not because I would BS or not, because I really like him. Joseph Nongue, comme Yaya Touré, Marcello is saying, hey, we are going there. Of course, it's two different worlds. Eh? One is a kid, he's 17. The other one is a uh, hat, his career in the back. Mamma mia, what a player, what a player. Uh, this, this guy, this guy, for everything he showed was fantastic, of course. He's committing a foul at the sixth minute that was quite aggressive, deserved yellow card. But then he receives a yellow card at the, what minute was it? I don't remember, but uh, uh, it was the 63rd minute. At the 63rd minute, he received a second yellow card. For what? For a run that is doing towards the box. He's not yet in the box. He's not yet in the box, but he's clearly pushed from the defender of Henk. I don't remember who he was. But clearly, you see the two hands pushing him. He's at full velocity. He's at full velocity. He's being pushed. He falls in the box. There is, and I can promise you because I watch it with my eyes, there is zero simulation. But really, zero simulation. Then you can discuss if you want to give the foul or not, which, according to me, there was a foul. I don't believe there was a penalty because it starts a bit earlier. Don't forget, there is no VAR. But for me, and i speaking with the people of Yank, if you already gave a doubtful red card, to De La Valle and in a, a direct red card at the 50th minute. If you give him a red card immediately without doubting, and it was severe, harsh for me, but you are able to give him a red card immediately. And 13 minutes later, you have no hesitation to give a second yellow while you know that that player has a yellow card for a simulation. You are ruining this guy's game. You are ruining Juventus, but probably also you are ruining the dream of some kids that are playing football because let them play. We are not in the final of the World Cup. We are not in the final of the Champions League. We are not in Manchester, Real Madrid, Manchester City, Real Madrid, where everything is counted. We are in a youth academy Champions League, okay? In a playoff game to go towards the round of 16, 
you are really ruining that beautiful moment. Uh, then I was speaking with a lot of people at the stadium. You know, you are speaking about that. Uh, ciao Benve! Benve, fantastico! Content creator in Italian. So, quelli che parlano in italiano, andate da Benve, perché fa contenuti fantastici, sempre allo stadio in Curva Sud. Andate a vederlo anche su Instagram, dappertutto. Grande Benve, fa piacere vederti qui. So, guys, for if you want some uh, Italian content, go to Benve, follow him, he's there uh, on a lot of things. Uh, Instagram, YouTube and so on. Continuing about the game that I watched today, for me you are really ruining it. Then I was speaking with people and you're asking yourself, guys, uh, I don't want to think bad. I don't want to have malicious thoughts. Eh, but they are pushing us towards that because I saw a big fall on uh, one of our players in the midfield. I believe it was Luis Haza, if I'm not wrong. Eh, that's a red card, and you are not even giving a red card. Guys, there were some really strange things, which makes me also scare for Europa League. Uh, it's not about not thinking bad. It's not about having malicious thoughts and crying. What I saw today, that you are taking away the dream of young kids that were giving everything on the field, well, it, it hurt me. That moment really hurt me. I was next to, I tell you, management of Yank, but not next, far away, next, next, next to me. When they saw the yellow card, the second yellow card, they told me, we don't understand. There is absolutely no simulation of the player. It's a fall. Maybe not a penalty because we don't know where it starts, but absolutely not a yellow card. So I'm really, really sad for the boys. Now, going back to another player that I really appreciated was Jonas Ruhi. He was dead at the 70th minute. Condition uh, can be better, physical condition, but he didn't give up. He didn't give up. We were playing with nine men from the 63rd minute. He didn't give up. At the end, he was still pushing. You know that Juventus with nine men, they went to 0-0 and went to extra time, but with nine men, they kept that 0-0 and they were the most dangerous one, hitting the post, guys. Uh... I was really proud about what the guys did. Jonas Ruhi, I really, really like today. Can he go immediately in first team? No. If I tell you a player that can be fast in first team from the one that I saw today playing, can I nil this could arrive there? Uh, but there is no space. Uh, with Miretti out, you have first the under-23, the next gen, with Barrenechea that can come up, but Nongay is a player that, uh, mamma mia. But on the other side, guys, there are kids, and this is something that you don't see, and I can tell you, after the game, I stay there, and uh, I saw uh, Nongay going out, speaking with a, uh, uh, a friend of him, where they were speaking French, I understand French, that's my language, and uh, he had a red card, so he couldn't go on the field, and he was speaking with a friend, but not speaking, you know, like uh, normal, like calm, like I am doing now with you. He was pissed off, he said, it's c'est pas juste, c'est pas juste, c'est pas juste. What does that mean, c'est pas juste? It is not correct, it is not correct, because he was really emotional for that red card, because he knows that that red card at the 63rd minute is leaving his guys, not with 10, but with 9, so you see that there are kids that are, they need to, to, to grow, to learn also, to accept a defeat, accept injustice, because sometimes sport is not correct. Sometimes sport is not fair. Um, so it's a process of growth. It's a process of growth. Um, but yeah, yeah, I told you, yeah, Nzuango was good, but of course, it's an under-23 player that is going down. Uh, I didn't see a lot of Mancini, and Mancini could give us a lot, but he didn't give us a lot. Um, yeah, that that's about the game. It, unfortunately, we go on penalties, and then we lose. Last year, we lost uh, with uh, Sule. This year, we lose with uh, Kenan Yildiz. It happens. After the game, I spoke with Kenan. I told him, it's okay, you know, missing a penalty is okay. 
tranquillo i said thank you for what for what he's doing always saying thank you uh and i said good luck as well he said thank you he was speaking in german with i believe family i believe it was his family that was there they were speaking with in german uh after the game he was super nice he was super nice super fantastic i have to admit that all the people that i met were super super nice storari montero uh bangula uh no they were they were super super friendly uh pesotto they were open um available for uh whatever for question for speaking for uh, pictures of course then if you start the game you start the game uh, uh marcello i think quelqu'un t'a impressionné is there someone that really impressed me at Hank? There was one player, uh, but I don't know uh, his name. It maybe Jim knows. It's one that had, you know, uh, he, he scored a penalty. I believe it was the second penalty because the first one was missed. I will tell you who it was. Uh, I believe it's Faisal Al Maziani. Faisal Az Al Maziani. I believe it's him. Uh, let me check. It's a player. Uh, yeah, the number three. He impressed me a bit, I have to admit. Not that much because of his technical qualities, but for his leadership skills. For his leadership skills. He was uh, asking the supporters to go to scream. He was motivating his team. In terms of charisma and leadership, he was one that... Uh, uh, eh, you see, Jimmy saying, yes, Beppe, he was the best today. <laughs> you see, I understand that even if I don't like the watching the other guys, uh, yeah... Uh, then I don't know. I, I can't. I can't really judge the players of Yen. It's the first time I ever saw them. Uh, but this guy, this guy impressed me today. Uh, that number three of Yang. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Hanin. The consequence of uh, of of Yang is because it's a youth academy sector, and that's what they are doing. Boom, 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 boom. They are taking these players, boom, and they have a, they have also a B team. So they are pushing them to the B team, and then their first team, then they are selling them. So it's normal that uh, is there. We lost, guys, we lost at the penalties. Huh? If we play 11 versus 11, we win that game. Huh? I didn't even speak about Paolo Montero, coaching style. Attenzione, bomba, I have to tell you. Benve, what do you think about Huysen? Hey, Huysen. Guys, I'm sad for Huysen, because Huysen... His name is Dean Huysen. And I believe only a few people on earth will be able to pronounce his name. Because in Italy they will call him Huysen. Huysen, because it's, they don't know how to pronounce Huysen. It doesn't exist. That that uh, that, that pronunciation, Huysen, hi, uh, uh, doesn't exist in Italy. So they will say Huysen. So I'm sad for that. No, except of the jokes... Huysen is ready. Guys, Huysen is ready. Uh, I saw him last time training with the first team. Taking into consideration, guys, we took him and we're lucky. Yeah? I don't know how we did. 15 years old from Malaga. He's burning all the steps. He's not anymore uh, under 19 players. Today he was not there because of a suspension. Okay, Otherwise, probably he would have been there. But it was because of suspension. He couldn't play today. He was not available. It's a pity. I really wanted to see him from uh, close. Um, but Huysen is a... Uh, He's, our, he's, a, he's a next gen player already. He's 17. He's already playing with next gen. He will renew his contract. And I believe that this is a fantastic investment. Player of personality. Player that uh, uh, knows, even if, you know, he doesn't look like really physical, tall, yes, but quite skinny. But he goes on contrast. He's absolutely not scared. Uh, Marcello is saying he's already, uh, f uh, he played for under 19, uh, 18 with Belgium. Ah, the Faisal, no, I, I didn't know. So, no, Benve, it's it's not a left back. Huysen is not a left back. Then, if you are speaking about the three-man defense, the three-man defense with Alexandro, Bremer, uh, Danilo, I don't know. Uh, he did it uh, in friendly versus Reika. And uh, versus Standard de Liège. No, he didn't play versus Standard de Liège. Or yes. I don't remember which two. But he played two games in friendly during December. Where he impressed. He really impressed. But 
also for him. Eh? Don't burn all the steps. Now Bonucci will come back. He will be already available for next game versus Fiorentina, which is a good news because it is a good news. You have already Federico Gatti that you need to continue to invest in. You have a Rugani that is on the bench. Um, I don't see him playing immediately in first team this season. Um, but it's a player if, if, and I hope not, I hope not, if there is another injury, it could, it could be part of it. But also for him, it's, a, it's the same discussion as a, a Kenan Yildiz. You bring these kids there and then they are on the bench and they are waiting that someone goes injured. Makes no sense. You are not taking a lot of experience. Where you are taking experience is that Juventus is already believing in these guys. Because a lot of time, especially Dean Huysen, they are taking him and they are letting him train with first team. And that's what you have to do. Training session already with the champions. Playing versus a Di Maria. <laughs> playing versus a Di Maria for a Dean Huysen. Fantastic. Yeah, try to man mark a Di Maria. Try to man mark uh, a Dusan Vlaovic, uh, a Federico Chiesa. So, uh, no, fantastic. Huh? So, what else? What what other question do you have? Uh, I, uh, eh, Montero, Montero, My Montero, guys. Uh, pro probably I will tell you guys that uh, it, you know it's one of my idols. I saw him when I was at the stadium for Juve Spezia. He was right behind me, one level up, but right behind me. So I, I was like this, I was watching him. And sometimes, you know, when there were some moments of the game, I was watching him because I heard him and he was really living that game. Guys, you know, Juventinita, Paolo Montero is a Juventino, 100%. Let's first speak about the men. The men, Montero, not the coach. Hey, guys, this guy, he played at high level eh, at Juventus. He played for national team of Uruguay. Guy, okay. humble. You know what is humble? Eh? Humble. Available. I, di I didn't ask for a picture or whatever because, you know, it's a different uh, when you're a fan or when you are working for Juve. When you are working for Juve, you don't ask signatures and so on. You don't do it. Fans are low to you are working for Juve. You don't, you know, you have benefits and you don't have all the, the privilege as well. But guys, seriously speaking, there were some fans that were going and he was preparing his game and said, Paolo, can we take a picture? Yeah. Someone had the shirt number four of uh, Montero, you know, an old vintage fan. A picture, he signed the shirt, available, super available. Uh, mamma mia. No, 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 no. The man, great. That That's the guy that is going towards you and he's shaking you your hand. It's beautiful. But, you know, uh, Montero, Pesotto, that is taking care of the youth academy for the older ones, Pesotto. Storari that is there. Storari, fantastic manager, eh, guys. But also him, humble, taking pictures with the people. Probably you, you saw it or not. With Storari, I took a picture because it was a calm moment where I was able to do it uh, with, uh, with Storari. You see? With Storari, that was a really beautiful moment. A fantastic and smiling person with Mbangula as well. Uh, that was really nice, really nice. Mangula. Uh, uh, that was, was fantastic was really beautiful but you know humble then as a coach I have to admit that you are playing with nine men you could have say stop we block everything and we go back no he was asking to play we played a 4-3-1 where Kenan Yildiz he had the possibility to go up he received also the task that if we could go on counter attack we go we go. Then I have to say that Henk was a bit stupid. Huh? They were stupid because car corner, we are with nine men. They are all defending with 11, Henk. Stay with one or two people up front because on counter-attack you kill us. Huh? You kill us. Or you are obliging some players of Juve to drop back. Guys, we were that close to score one or two goals in the end of the game. Stupid from Henk, probably the experience. But, uh, but Montero was asking, go, andiamo, andiamo. Let's go try to win it. Then you will not be happy with what I will tell you, but there were some moments of the game where Paolo Montero was saying, calma, calma ragazzi. So 
guys, coaches, they are allowed to say calma as well. It's not only Max Allegri that is saying calma, but smart, calma, let's go now, pushing, showing with the, with the hands. No, no, uh, uh, uh. a manager, a manager that has a clear idea of playing, I saw a beautiful event, especially with a 10 men, especially with nine men. I saw a beautiful event that wa wanted to do it. Um, so I'm happy. I'm happy with uh, with Paolo Montero. I believe he will have a really great career as a coach. I believe he can become a coach of Juventus in the future. I'm happy that he didn't become the coach of Juventus in the winter. You remember when we were saying a bit, uh, what was it, uh, October, eh, Sacca Allegri, Sacca Allegri, let's uh, take uh, Montero. No, no, calma also for him, calma, but he has everything to become a really great coach. He knows how to speak to players. I know some secrets that I am not allowed to reveal. That's the problem. There are some some inside stories that I can't tell you, speaking, understanding some de decisions that he made and so on and so on, that I'm not able to reveal, <laughs> uh, that are proving me that he's a great coach. That is a really great coach. Michael, I would take Tudor. Yeah, uh, you would take Tudor. Tudor, he has a contract with uh, Marseille. You can't take Tudor. So... Um, Calma is okay, Halma is not allowed. Okay, we make the difference, Hanin. Uh, Marcello is saying Montero never got a red card. Never, never, never. Uh, Gianluca, are there some Italians in the under 19 that are interesting for the future? Well, uh, Nongue is Belgian. Um, but Nicolo Turco. But I would go, if, if there is one Italian, no, oh, let's say two Italian. Bonetti is not bad, uh, but I would go then from the one that I saw today. Luis Haza is good, is really good. Uh, Luis Haza is really good. If he takes a bit of muscles, a bit of boom, he can do really great. Um, yeah, Luis Haza in the under 19 huh? uh, was really good. Then Angele was not bad when he entered, but there, there, you know, there is a, you know, there is a difference between not being bad and uh, the future. Luis Haza, I would count on him uh, to have a beautiful career. I don't know if he will have a top career, but beautiful career. Um, where is everyone today? Good question. I have no idea. Did I do something wrong? It can be, eh? you know, sometimes it happens that I do something wrong with a, with a stream of YouTube, but then it's my own fault. Uh, of course, let me check if I did something wrong. Because we are really, re not, we are, there is nobody. There is absolutely nobody. Normally we are 200, 250 for a nightlife. And now we are with uh, 80 persons. Strange, eh? I, I think it's strange. No, it's under sport. I don't know what happened uh, anyway people they are uh, they don't care it's good it's good it's it's not late guys i always do the lives uh, around that time i don't believe it's really late uh new york Juventino is listening sir sir we are here but it's late people are probably already sleeping or at work uh, that's the problem of having an international channel you never know when to go when you are in italy it's much easier uh. italian channel you know it and you know the hours also today look today i tried something uh, and then we go to my experience but uh today i tried something my video was because i had to go to hank so my video was early was ready super early this morning 10 a.m my time 10 a.m in the morning was already ready and uh, I, I was preparing. I said, you know what, what do I do? Do I plan the video the usual time? It's 1 p.m. when I bring them out or do I uh, anticipate and I put it at 10? I put it at 10, I had no views on the video. But the problem is if there are no views on the video, the algorithm of YouTube is thinking, ah, it's a bad video, nobody's watching. so. Uh, we will not promote it because it's a bad video. And that's my problem. I can't go with videos that 
9 or 10 a.m. in the morning because everyone is sleeping. And the people that are awake, they don't watch it because they are doing things. Of course, they are going to work, to school. So I'm obliged to wait at least 1 p.m. so that the American ones, Canada and so on, they, South America, that they wake up so that they start watching the video. That's a big problem, huh? That's a really big problem. Uh, but anyway, c'est la vie. C'est la vie. It is what it is. Um... Turco, good, but he didn't impress me that much today. Didn't impress me that much today. Um, ciao, Juve Ghiari. In questi giorni YouTube uh, fa schifo e per i contenuti Juve non spinge nulla. No, è molto difficile. In questi giorni, sì. Uh, ben Vedad is also a creator. He's telling me that at the moment it's really, really difficult on YouTube. But I see it. Uh, I try to push. We do the usual ones, but it's hard. It's really hard. Uh, that's why I'm counting on you for maximum of likes. You know, I tell you maximum of likes. That's the only thing that I'm asking to you. Go with likes, 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 like whatever you see a video. When you see a video, put it on, watch it. Uh, you know, at least, you know, we are pushing it. Anyway, uh, we spoke a lot huh, about uh, the under 19. What else? Do you have other questions? Because I told you I didn't prepare, so I really want to go with uh, your questions. We spoke about... Can I this about uh, Nonge, Bonetti, Haza, Ruhi? Um, what else? What else? What do you want to know? 6 p.m. Perfect. I know, I know, Esther. Um, they say Allegri doesn't like the young players. Fan itself don't care much either. Um, I don't understand, uh, Sasha. I don't understand. Ah. Ah, many don't care about... Ah, okay, okay, no, because I... Okay, you are speaking in parts. That make it difficult. People are probably sleeping or working, or many don't care about the youth team. Uh, they are saying that Allegri doesn't like the young players, but they find themselves. They are not caring that much neither. Okay, now, now it makes sense. Now, if you see some parts... Look, I tell you, as every single fan, or at 99%, I'm a supporter from the first team, but I always try to look, you know, the results of the young teams. But since the creation... Buonanotte, benve, ci vediamo e ci sentiamo presto, ciao. Uh, from the creation of the Juventus women team, you know, I start also. Where is the game from here? Where is the game from there? Let me check the under 19. Creation of the next gen. Let me check the next gen. Because, you know, it's easy to say, Mamma mia, he played a friendly with us. We want him in first team. Yeah, okay. But uh, how did, how many games did you see from that player? What is that player in difficult condition? What, how is he reacting on that situation? On that? Is he consistent or not? You know? Remember when I told you Ealing Jr. is a player, fantastic player that I love, but one of his problems is inconsistency in one game in the 90 minutes where sometimes he appears, he disappears, but also in different games. Well, uh, Ealing Jr. at the moment, even if he's not receiving a lot of time, but maybe it's also, you know, one of the consequences of uh, training now with the first team. Now that you had that boost, that adrenaline, adrenaline, Adrenalina. Eh? When you have the dopamine in your in, in your brains, when you're saying go, go, it's positive, everything is working well, going away and you are going down a bit, it's a bit more difficult. Um, then um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, no guys, I want to first before speaking about Gasperina, Gasperini, Di Maria, or whoever, I want to speak first about uh about uh, today, guys, uh, uh, about the under-19. We spoke about the players, uh, about experience himself. I'm super satisfied. Uh, I'm super satisfied. Of course, I'm a bit I'm a bit sad. I couldn't do an interview post-game with the players because we lost with nine players on the field. It was not the moment to annoy them with questions. They are kids. Also in that, eh, they are kids. They have to grow it's a process to start learning speaking in front of microphones. They do it, of course. They do it when we lose as well. It's not because you lose that you never speak, but it's a process to, to do it. Um, 
So like, today I didn't do it. I, I, I was there. I had everything prepared. I prepared a lot. I worked a lot to prepare it. But at the end, you know, it was a strange way of losing. They, they were sad. The players were sad. Coach was sad. So we didn't do any post-game interview. But except of that, it's just, just fantastic, guys. I live 1 hour 40 uh, with a car. 1 hour 30, 1 hour 40 from uh, Hyang. So I went with the car, I started here, it was like 11.30, something like that, a bit earlier, maybe 11.20. I arrived, it was a uh, uh, 2.15, 2.20 uh, at the stadium of Genk. There was not a lot of traffic. I arrived there, the game starts at four. Uh, so I was really, you know, it's strict minimum. Uh, when I arrived, the team was not, or not there yet. No, it's not true, I arrived before. No, no, I arrived at the 1.50, 1.50 p.m. I arrived. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah, 1.45, well, 1.45. I arrived there and uh, the team was not there yet, but you have already the team manager that is there speaking with people. I was able to go in the locker rooms. I will show you a picture here. I wanted to do a video about it, but uh, let's show you uh, the, the locker rooms with, uh, with uh, the shirts that were there. Uh, so it, it's nice, you see, it's nice to, to, to see these kind of things, the pregame before the team arrives, you see it, you know, when they are taking the pictures, it's really nice to see, and uh, you arrive, you speak with the team manager, he's speaking to you about the day before, what happened, and so on and so on, you speak with the local people from Genk, a lot of Italian, uh, I, if I tell you the, the, the feeling I had, uh, from the people of Genk, they were happy, to welcome Juventus. Uh, you have a big community of Italian people living in Genk. Genk is uh, one of the cities in Belgium where you have a lot of uh, uh, Italians or at least, you know, the, the new generation of Belgium Italian guys. They were really happy to meet Juventus. A lot of respect from all the people there that were working, trying to do a lot of things in a great way, preparing the shirts, preparing, cleaning everything. I have to say that uh, it's beautiful. Genk is, is a nice city in Belgium, but but it's fantastic to see how much they were uh, uh, welcoming. Then, yeah, I spoke with a lot of people. What are you doing for you? I see it. Pa, 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 pa. That was really nice. And then you have the, um, I, I went on the field. I go on the field watching. You see the UEFA Youth League. So it's a beautiful experience. Uh, in the morning, of course, before leaving, and yesterday evening after the live, I was preparing the game. Uh, you know, the players who are there, how many games they played, you know, how many go goals they scored, so that, you know, preparing questions, you never know which player you will have in post-game interview. So I had questions for Yildiz, I had questions for uh, Nongue, for Bangula, for Montero. You know, I had a lot of questions. At the end, I didn't use anyone. I bet this is part of the job, guys. But then I arrived there, then the team is arriving. The supporters were not there yet. Team started to arrive. It was really nice to see uh, uh, the players. The players arriving. First, you had the one of Yank, then you had the ones of Juventus that arrived. And uh, um, yeah, you, you see them in real life, you know, players that you always see. Of course, I am 41, so they could be my sons, you know, because my son is 14. These guys are 17, 18, some a bit older, but most of them are, you know, 17 years old, super young. And uh, you, you see kids actually, but it's really nice to see them, how they behave, uh, you know, uh, how they are speaking, how they have already that... Uh, behavior of already uh, the first team player. That's really nice to see. Uh, you know, you have some players with a, with the AirPods, some players with the earphones, some players that are there, uh, that are talking to each other. You have some players that were, you know, like, uh, like this, I show you. Huh? Some players were really like this, like this. You don't see the eyes. You have a hat here. They are walking like that, you know, like this. They are walking. They are touching the field. They are just looking at the ground. They have already a bit that uh, that uh, that feeling of uh, I I am a star. Um, but but without being disrespectful, huh? without being disrespectful. But you already have that aura of hmm, this guy 
will uh, will do it. Um, so Antonio is saying, you live the dream, man. I guess you also had uh, learned a lot of things behind the scene. Yeah, you learn a lot of things. I just, you know, I, I sat next, I, I learned what is a team manager doing, you know, making sure that he arrives before everyone, that everything is ready, talking already with the press that is there, that is filming the locker rooms, uh, giving some infos if they need to. So he's super available. He's leaving before the team, so the team is still in hotel. He's going already to the stadium before everyone, which is totally normal. Eh? But speaking being the contact person is always on the phone also if someone needs it then the team arrived there is a schedule when is the team arriving and so on and so on he arrives uh then he go with them also on the pitch uh, not that he's training them he's not taking part what surprised me also was that montero uh was not the first one going on the pitch with the players he let them go on the on the field pesotto Pesotto is a player, is a person that is going on the field. Uh, he's taking care of the youth academy. He's going there. He's walking. He's doing some runs alone and not. Then he's speaking. Then you have Storari that is going as well. They are on the pitch. They are watching. They are checking. I don't know what they are speaking about. The players are talking to themselves. Then they go in the locker room. They start to put, you know, the, the, the warm-up kits. They go on the pitch. They train. But you know that, of course. And that's the same thing. Meanwhile, the, the team manager is there. I was talking with some people like uh, Steph, like Jim, was uh, nice, was fantastic. Then uh, uh, the game starts, so I, I, I was sitting, you know, up. There were some reserves, uh, reserved seats. I had the luck to sit uh, next to the management of, uh, of Henk. Great people, great people. At a certain moment, uh, they didn't know that I was speaking Flemish in the beginning. And uh, they were uh, telling me, uh, they, they were speaking to each other and they were speaking about uh, the level of, uh, no, first they were speaking about Juventus. Uh, you know, did you see uh, they had a points deduction and so on and so on. They didn't speak a lot about it, but I was understanding everything. Then they, they went to a level of Serie A and this was something that hurt me because they were saying, you know, I watched Inter Milan they call it Inter versus AC. They always say Inter versus AC, AC Milan, Inter Milan. They said, uh, you know, we were watching uh, Inter AC Milan and uh, uh, it was really bad. It was really not great, uh, slow, a lot of falls, uh, not a beautiful game. They are correct and they are correct, especially if then in the evening you go home and you watch Marseille, Paris Saint-Germain, guys. Uh, the agent, no, me, I speak a lot of languages. Then uh, then I started speaking with him in Flemish, fantastic guy. Uh, but uh, what do you see? You have the team manager next to me. You have next to him, you had the team data analyst. So it's a guy with an iPad. He has an iPad. Vocal guy. He's there with the iPad. And there is a chrono that is going, the chrono of the game, okay? And there is the field, and there are a lot of touches on that iPad. Yeah, touches, touch screen, of course. And it's an application <laughs> with yellow card, red card. Unfortunately, you had to use it too much uh, for the changes, corner kicks, uh, touching the ball. So he was actually doing tac, 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 all the game, watching, doing, clicking, and uh, a lot of data that is keeping, holding, not only for match reports, but also for analyzing players. So it was really beautiful was really beautiful to see i was speaking to him he was explaining me a bit what he was doing with that data but these are the things that you don't necessarily see when you are uh, when when you're not there next to them you know i was a lot of time at the stadium i never saw next to me someone that is really there taking uh, things then also you know the team manager uh is taking notes you know on his phone normally about okay the changes this that um it's nice to see they're speaking about the game of it was nice really nice um then i saw before the game starts bangula is coming with two other players they are just in front of me they were super kind of course and bangula was uh, uh he was not in a big 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 mood it's a pity that he didn't play today was not in a big mood because he couldn't play but uh it's nice also you know that uh, they are there they are watching they are supporting I was, uh, and unfortunately, I was watching sometimes his phone because it was right in front of me. He speaks French. So I uh, was speaking and, you know, a, a fun thing, guys, this is inside information. I will not reveal you everything, of course. Huh? Inside information. 
at a certain moment. It's not because I wanted, I promise you I didn't want to. But at a certain moment he was in front of me with his phone like this. Hey, guys, what do you think that I will close my eyes? I was watching. He received a screenshot from Twitter that was speaking about the game. And he was commenting something, okay? Uh, so I will not say from which Twitter page, I will not say these kind of things and so on and so on. Uh, but uh, it's nice to see that these players, you know, when I always tell you, pay attention how you are speaking about players, it was not a bad comment, I believe. Huh? Uh, no, I, 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 it was not a bad comment. But anyway, you know, it goes fast. It goes super fast. And don't, don't forget these players, they are not on Twitter, maybe. They don't have an account, or some they have. A lot of them have. But the velocity, because he was he was on the stance, he received a message at a certain moment during the game. It was after the red card of uh, Nongay. A screenshot from a Twitter page that I know, that I follow. Twitter page, screenshot, bings. He received it, he's watching it, and he's commenting uh, with his friend. So... That's why I always tell you, pay attention, because uh, it's not because they don't comment online that they don't see it. Uh, especially these young people now more and more that are used, and it's totally normal, to be on social network. No, I will not tell you what they said, uh, because it's private life. Uh, but... Um, yeah, Beppe with the Marotta eyes. Maybe that's why Marotta became like this because he was also watching the the messages of his uh, of his uh, team players or players. Beppe Var. Yeah, yeah, indeed Var. I was watching. No, but you can't. You can't, guys. With all the respect, you know, you can't just turn around and not look. It's impossible. It's impossible. You see, I mean, hey, the phones are big eh? today. It's not, you know, like a small phone. It's a big phone. Eh? You are keeping here. I'm watching the game. You are showing me the phone here. Eh, you see, and I know the logo from the profile pic from who I saw it. I knew him. Uh, so, and then he was commenting in French. Um, these uh, small informations but this was really really nice for me fantastic experience happy uh, of the trust that Juventus gave me even if at the end I didn't do any interview the trust from Juventus it's beautiful um, you know three years ago I was uh, not even thinking to do something like that I was watching all the games with my father and uh, three years later I I'm sitting in the stands at a certain moment someone took a picture of me on, on television. I will show you. Uh, I will show you. Wait. Uh, internet is slow. Internet is slow. <laughs> I don't know if I will be able to show you. Yeah, here. Uh, here. Ah, this one you can't see it. Maybe I will put it on uh, on Twitter. On my Twitter, it will be probably a bit better. Uh, you see? These are the locker rooms. This one is here with uh, Storari. I didn't post a lot. Uh, this one here, but I can't be... I'm, I'm here, you know? Next to the team. Uh, the, this is... Uh, uh, wait, huh? Uh, this is M. Mangula, he's here. These are other players from Juve, the goalkeeper, the third goalkeeper that was not uh, on the bench. Then you have the team manager, the data analyst that you can see with the iPad. You see, I told you I'm here. This is uh, one of the big investors of the youth sector of uh, Henk, super friendly. Uh, so, yeah, it was really nice. And, you know, when I saw that picture that someone sent me to me, uh, I was like, uh, I, I was like, uh, I, I was like, you know, you know, when you see Carubini, Agnelli, Nedved in the stands, I was, I was feel, I was feeling a bit like that. I was feeling like Carubini, to be honest, um, or, or Agnelli. Maybe one day I will buy over Juventus, guys. Who knows? Who knows? But, uh, no, it's true, huh? 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't care. I didn't even know at a certain moment people are sending me pictures like, uh, look, you're on television and you are with the staff of Juve and, and with the players of Juve. I was really there. You remember uh, Bonucci when he was sitting on his seat? It's really strange. Okay, really, 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 really strange. Uh, look, at Terry saying YouTube is down for some people, but, uh, by the way, that episode. Ah, that's why. That's why. Thank you, Locatelli. Thank you, Locatelli. That's why. Hey, I saw 80 people. I said it's strange. Huh? Why is uh, Under on my Twitter page? Under, because uh, <laughs> it's not Under. It's Paolo Dybala. I said I didn't know that Dybala signed for Marseille. It, guys, it's Dybala. It's the same as Dybala. The same, the same. Also, especially when you see a uh, under uh, that is um, uh, when he is playing at uh, at the Roma. The same, the same, the same, the same. It's the it's the Dybala of Wish, of course, the Dybala of Wish, but it's uh, it's a bit the same. Fantastic, fantastic. No, great, 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 great game, guys. That's it. Huh? Uh, if you don't have other questions. I don't have a lot of things to say more than that. I can't reveal you all the secrets, of course, but uh, what I can say, I tell you. Uh, Beppe, do you think half of these youth players will be part of... A, well, attenzione, we are speaking about two different categories, Juan. Uh, first, you have the next gens, and then you have the under-19s. If today I will tell you some player that could go potentially in first team, not speaking about Juve necessarily, yeah, but having a, a, a good ca career... I'm not speaking about the new Mbappé, eh? but a good career. I would put my my two cents on Nongue, Yildiz, uh, Luis Haza, Mbangula, that didn't play today, that didn't play today. Uh, even Mancini can do something. Um... These are the players that really, I believe, have one more, uh, you know, Turco, sometimes, sometimes. Uh, then you have the other ones, Bonetti, is a good player, he's a good player, but he's already under 23. Uh, Heisen, yeah, I believe Heisen, uh, nearly sure about it. He can do something. Um, half is a big word. Half is a big word, uh, guys. Half is a big word. A few good, yes. A few good, yes. Um, but goalkeepers, Dafara today, uh, he did a fantastic save on a free kick. He saved a penalty. Um, sometimes he was a bit shaky. But a good goalkeeper, then to tell you he's a player that is ready for the first team, maybe not. Um, De La Valle, well, De La Valle was playing well, was really playing well. Uh, then he had that red card that was, for me, excessive. He was playing well. Then to tell you that he's... Uh, no, then I prefer Riccio and Heisen. Uh, uh, Richo and Heisen. Richo from under 23. Heisen also from under 23, but Heisen is 17 years old. Uh, Zakir. Today I gave two assists to my opponent teams and lost 3-2. Eh, bravo, Zakir. <laughs> great, great, fantastic. A bit like uh, Hans Nicolussi. Uh, Dan Avola, in your opinion, Beppe, who is the most talented Primavera player in Juve history to not reach his potential? <sighs> wow. Uh, ha. That's a big question. That's a big question. Uh, but Jovinko, yes and no. Yes and no, because at the end he played fantastically well with uh, with Parma, did good things with Juve. Was it the max for Jovinko? Probably yes. Clemenza. 
Clemens as a player. Probably that, uh, uh, yeah, that I was really seeing a lot. And I, I'm happy that Arif says Kin. Kin has some time because don't forget he's a 2000. It's the first real year where he's putting his head. Guys, Kin, I'm not speaking about this year. We speak about the past, so I can speak about the past. Keen, and you know it, it's on the papers and so on and so on. He did a lot of stupid things. Arriving late at trainings, he was kicked out of the national Italian team with his friend Zagnolo. Uh, arriving late at the, at the team, not always uh, agreeing, not always giving his best in training session, not being an exemplary player. Uh, Moise Keen... If he continued like that, having Balotelli as an idol, it was not the best way to enter the favors of, of, uh, of Juve. Um, to Moiskin, uh, I would say yes, because Moiskin is the, from the last years, really one that did crazy well eh? in, in young academy player. He did so well. So, yes, he's improving. For the first time, he's training and performing as a real professional. And I tell you guys, speaking with uh, Juventus, a lot of young players, but also other players from first team, but especially young players, they are, right, they, they are not always on time. They are not always respecting the rules. Sometimes, guys, and I can prove you, then if you want to go on other people listening to what they want to say, uh, how they hate Juve and everything is going wrong and that the coach is always the, the problem, uh, you can listen to them. But I can tell you with certainty, because I know, I can promise you, that sometimes choices are made not because of performance of the player at the moment, but because of behavior. Uh, and sometimes players are not playing because of behavior because of stupid things that they did in training, because they arrived late, because they are not respecting rules, especially with this youth academy. And sometimes you have to punish some people, um, even if you know that it's important for a team. But if you are not starting immediately now, then it's, then it's a big problem. Um, Thomas, I hope not. I hope not. Uh, because Thomas, uh, luckily, I'm not alone to be an old uh, an old guy here on the channel. But uh, Sorensen, I really remember Sorensen, and also here I had uh, uh, beautiful thoughts about Sorensen that then went to Bologna and so on and so on. A lot of loans, smaller teams, never had a great career, Sorensen. But uh, no, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Uh, then of course he's young, he's strong. His skinny, his blonde hair. Uh, you could say, yeah, Mamma Mia is giving me Sorensen vibes, but hopefully for him he will have a better career as Sorensen. Um, common attitude for Rayola clients, but it's not only, only Rayola clients. Uh, not only, but it's true that uh, when you are looking at uh, Keen Balotelli, uh, yeah, person with a personality. Then, of course, you have to also uh, check the background of players, where they are coming from, how they had to fight to arrive at a certain level. Uh, and then you have the personality of players. I believe that Juventus, honestly, is a really great school for players. How I saw how they were treated today, how they were guided, how much important examples they have, like a Montero, Pesotto, Storari. There's a team manager that is there, every team. Eh? But when you see the professionality of Juventus, how we are protecting them and so on and so on, it's really beautiful to see. So I have to say, uh, uh, in our youth academy, we are doing beautiful things. Ciao, Mohamed Youssef. Yesterday we were missing you. We were sad that you were not there. And we were asking, where is Mohamed? Keen has a lot to prove yet. Uh, at play, he does not take the easy pass forward. Uh, no, he has to do better. But when you are comparing Keane with the one of last year, it's a totally different player. It's a player now that, you know, is giving me the vibes that when he's starting, okay, okay. Uh, when he was starting last year, I was like, I hope that he will do well. This year, when he starts, 
I'm saying, okay, it can do well. Will he do it or not? I don't know. Ciao, Anthony Schifano. Just popping in. You see, that's the way. Popping in. Like. Going away. Coming back. Um, Beppe, can you make first team players out of the next gen and the under 19? No, you can't. You can't do that. It's impossible. Guys, In uh, you have also to realize something else. Uh, under 23, we are 10th. I believe we are 10th. Uh, next gen, we had an amazing start. Probably the amazing start entered the head of the players and in 2023 we only won versus Milan 4-2 the other games we drew or we lost so also there you know young players you believe that okay everything will be easy and then you start dropping points uh, missing games not always with the performance but with the result not concentrated enough not you know going for it uh, no, I we can't, we can't. Um, es- no, no, we can't, we can't. Tenth, and then we are third with the uh, under uh, nineteen. Today we were not able to beat Genk, even if playing with uh, nine men from the sixty third minute, it's hard. Yeah? It's really hard, and that's something that I appreciated was uh, how Montero managed it. I didn't see any crazy scene and so on you know like drama from Montero no it was really really good beautiful example um, Mohamed was in business trip for two days missing the game sadly we won gladly and eh, luckily maybe you have to go more on business trips Mohamed <laughs> maybe because you are bringing luck yesterday we won and we did also really well in terms of playing uh Marcello, est-ce que je vais couvrir d'autres parties de la Juve under... Uh, non, je pense pas. Uh, Marcello is asking if I will cover other na- under-19 games. I don't think so because we are out of a, of a youth league. So I don't see them coming immediately back in uh, in Belgium. Then, of course, you know, if we continue there and you play versus Ajax, I could have gone to Amsterdam. It's really near. Uh, there were other I don't remember by heart now, but I was preparing this yesterday and then this morning. You know, if it's Dortmund, I can go with the car easily. If it's uh, if it's uh, Amsterdam, if it, you know, uh, I can go. Alkmaar, that's easy. Then uh, in Italy, they have a team uh, that is doing it. They will not say, Beppe, come from uh, Belgium to cover the under-19 team. Then uh, we we started now having the Turin Giant guys, uh, Dash and Dave, on the channel of Juve. Super happy. I'm guiding them. So in terms of Juve, I'm doing a bit more because I'm not only taking care about myself, but I'm managing also here in terms of schedules, guiding what is good, what is bad, um, which is really nice, really beautiful opportunity, you know. Um, but that will allow me also to have, you know, like normally 50% of the games where I will not be um, doing Twitch Juve. And that's good because I was doing every single game. And I think it's important also for me to be able to say, ha, I can go to Torino. I can watch a game. I can do uh, uh, something else, another uh, another life, maybe a quiz, maybe uh, uh, something else, which is... Uh, which, which is really nice, what I was not able to do with only wa- watch-alongs, because I was doing every single game, every single game. So I don't believe I will go on uh, on travel with the other, with a uh, with youth team. Um... Yeah, Arif, we finally can do a game uh, uh, together. But of course, I will have to ask. It will not be for February. Um, it will not be for February because I need to do another trip with my family. Nothing to see with Juve. So that's uh, something that I promised since long. And finally, I can maybe start planning it. Uh, but I want to bring my son again. Uh, so <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let, 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 let's check. Which, which game can we can we go? Let me check. I'm curious. I'm curious. I want to go two two more times this season. I don't know if it's possible or not. Huh? I would love to go two more times. Let's go. Let's go. Let's check. Let's check. Fixtures. 
So uh, let's skip February because this is impossible. So from uh, March on, <laughs> we play Juve Sampdoria. Inter Juve is not in our stadium. Uh, Juve Verona in April. Ooh. Attenzione, Juve Inter in our home the 4th of April. Eh, hey, that, that's a game. That's a game. I forgot that. I forgot that. The 4th of April, 2023. No, sorry. The 19th of March. No. What? Eh? Eh, the 4th of April. That can be a nice one. That can be a real nice one. Eh, I can even try to go for the first and the fourth. What is the first and the fourth? April, eh? April, the first is a Saturday, the fourth is a Tuesday. Fantastic. Fantastic. That can be one trip. And then, uh, Juve Napoli, I don't want to go. No, no, I don't want to go. Uh, and then eh, Juve Milan on the 28th of May Twenty eighth of May Even if there the season will probably already be over uh, It will not be the the Juve Milan with a lot of uh, Of enthusiasm. No, he's not playing football uh, Sasha. No Ciao from Finland, Giulio Giuseppe. No, not Napoli. I don't want to go. I don't want to go into Napoli. <laughs> uh, not this season. Not this season. Recornaldo, ciao Beppe, I'm pissed off today. Can you make me feel happy again? Uh, I would love, I would love to, but uh, I'm about to close the life, Recornaldo. I'm, uh, I'm about to close the life. I'm here to close the life. But uh, how can I make you uh, happy? Um, Recornaldo is a big fan of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Eh? <sighs> Smile, smile again, Recornaldo. Anyway, anyway, look at the positives. You know, I tell you one thing, Recornaldo. Okay, let's let's make Recornaldo happy and then we close. You know how? I will explain you today. Look, I prepared. I promise you it's true. Huh? I promise you it's true. Look, where is it? Eh, I already, I don't have everything because I threw a lot away already, but I prepared. So many papers, so many papers for today's game, you know, like uh, uh, questions, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, questions for players, things. I, pre I, I prepared really a lot. I have other pages that were in my pocket and so on, uh, because there was a possibility that I could, uh, uh, normally I, I should have uh, interviewed the players and the coach after the game, Juventus, youth team versus uh, Henk. I drew, I drew, I drove. One hour thirty to arrive in Hien. You know, normally uh, at the end I didn't interview them because the way we we lost was not a nice one, and people were not in the mood, which is totally fine. You know, I could see life as a wow, it's a missed opportunity. I drove that much. We lost at the penalties. Uh, you know, I prepared. I did so much work to to interview the players and so on and so on. And at the end, I don't have videos with players. Uh, you know, when when will it happen again that I will have that opportunity? You can see the bad side, side, side of the story and you can be sad. Or you can say, you know, there are also positive things. I went to a game. I uh, met some players at the end. Uh, I didn't do an interview, of course. But what are the good things? And when I entered home, my son, he... He looked at me, he was a bit sad, he said, Beppe, uh, oh, Beppe, no Beppe, he said, uh, you know, dad, he said, uh, dad, uh, uh, are you happy, a bit sad, uh, how is it going? And I, I explained to him, you know, 
look at the beautiful things. It was nice. I did this, this, this. So let's see the positive things. And at the end, uh, being pissed off, why? There are so many more serious things. Uh, you know, again, I already did it and I want to repeat it for people from uh, Lebanon, Syria, Turkey. Uh, look at the earthquake, look how, how many people unfortunately, unfortunately passed away, the disaster situation there and so on and so on. So, uh, you know, these are things that unfortunately, natural dramas, catastrophe, we, 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 we don't have a lot of power on that, you and me, you know. Uh, we can help to save the nature and so on, but these kind of things will still happen. Um, will still happen, unfortunately. These are serious things where you can't do anything. But what you can do, it's trying to see the positives, even if sometimes things are not great, are not fantastic. See the positives. Um, yeah, indeed, Jim, there was one minute of silence also organized before the game. Um, voila. Uh, you see? Feeling already better. The sea from Marek Ronaldo. Uh, ciao, Admin. Ciao, Sasha. Ciao to Mohamed Yusuf. Uh, try to rest a bit. Not too many business trips, eh, Mohamed. Otherwise, you will be tired. Peniel. Grande Peniel. Grande Jim. Again, thank you, Jim. Uh, Hanin. Grande Hanin. Uh, Bonne nuit to uh, Marcello. Yes, you were again. Fantastic. Unfortunately, today I have chosen. But anyway, in a way, it's good because it was a small committee. I don't know why the other people, they were not able to go and learn YouTube. I'm happy that Locatelli told me, yeah, attenzione, Beppe, it was a uh, um, YouTube that is a bit down, like Twitter was a bit down a bit earlier. So I'm a bit reassured. Uh, buono. Ciao, Paul. Ciao Dan, ciao El, ciao Michael, ciao a tutti, ciao Henrik that is about to change his name on YouTube. Grande a tutti, ciao, grazie, forza, Juve, ciao ragazzi.